Good day, family, on this June 25th, 2021, and welcome to an installment of 7-Minute Share from Sentinels for Christ. I'm J.P. Greer, the founder and director from Sentinels for Christ, and today we're still in 1 Thessalonians. We're going to be reading from chapter 2, verses 1 through verse 8. Take a few minutes to reflect on that so that we are blessed in Jesus' name. So let's get into the Word. Paul writes, for you yourselves know, brethren, that our coming to you was not in vain. He's talking to the Thessalonian church, and he is rehearsing his trip to them. But after we had already suffered and been mistreated in Philippi, as you know, we had the boldness in our God to speak the gospel of, of God amidst much opposition. For our exhortation, that means an encouragement, does not come from error or impurity or by way of deceit. But just as we have been entrusted by God to be entrusted with the gospel, so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God who examines our hearts. For we never came with flattering speech, as you know, nor with the pretext for greed, that means pretending to be something for the purposes of getting money. God is our witness, nor did we seek glory from men, either from you or from others, even though as apostles of Christ, we might have asserted our authority. But we proved to be gentle among you as a nursing mother tenderly cares for her own children. What a beautiful picture. Having so fond an affection for you, we were well pleased to impart to you not only the gospel of God, but also our own lives because you have become very dear to us. What a beautiful piece of scripture. A um, <clears throat> couple thoughts. What is the gospel of God? It's simple. It's this. Jesus Christ is God's son. And when he died on the cross for the sins of the world, that opened the door for reconciliation for you and I to have a relationship with God again. That's what Paul is saying. And they brought this message to the church of Thessalonica. You would find this story, if you have your Bible, in Acts chapter 17. It was the second time that Paul went on a missionary voyage, and it was in the first century. Long time ago, for those of you who may not read a lot of your Bible, but we want to bless everyone in our little shares. Paul references with the Thessalonians that prior to coming to them, that they were mistreated in Philippi. You'll find the account of that in Acts chapter 16, and they really were. It was one tough ministry where people were in opposition to the gospel, but it actually wasn't people. It was the spirit behind the, uh, the, the atmosphere at Philippi that was trying to prevent the gospel from moving forward. This is what Paul is talking about. Because what happened was word got out that he was spreading the gospel, people didn't like it, and people started following Paul and his traveling companions, Timothy and Silas, down through Greece trying to usurp the good news of God, that God loves them and their salvation in Jesus Christ. You'll find this recurrent theme. But isn't it interesting that Paul leans into something that I think is really the focus of his message, and it's this, that when they shared the gospel of God, it was as if... They were like a nursing mother taking care of her children in gentleness. You see, that's how we know that someone is authentic when they're sharing the gospel. They're not magnanimously charismatic. They're not able to convince us of things against our conscience because Jesus lives in them. When they release the message of Jesus to us, our spirit senses it, and it should be gentle. There's plenty of people running around the world today. They may be Christians, they may not be, but they're giving all sorts of messages from all sorts of intents for all sorts of reasons which have nothing to do with restoring people to Jesus Christ and God the Father. Paul mentions some of those things here. Some people were obviously seeking glory from men. He says he wasn't. Some people were using the gospel as a pretext for greed. I know this is one of the biggest criticisms that unfortunately we hear in the church that it looks like a lot of people in the church are well-to-do, while the people that they claim to take care of are not. I don't think that's of God. I think if you're living well beyond the means of the culture around you, and you try and claim that that is God's abundance blessing upon your life, I think you're in a, a scripture danger zone, because the apostles thought that. The disciples of Jesus did at one point, and Jesus made it clear that our financial abundance doesn't determine our blessing from God. What's in our heart does. And when we get to a point where we live above the culture around us and we're so insincere that we don't take care of them 
or we do take care of them and we're only giving out of our surplus, Jesus had a lot to say about that as well. So Paul says we are not these type of people. In fact, Paul will go on in the second letter of Thessalonians when we get there to say, hey, when we were ministering among you, we worked amongst you so that you wouldn't be burdened. When we go on mission with Sentinels for Christ, we try not to burden people. Now, people bless us and we love that, but we try not to do that. But what we try and do is mimic what the Apostle Paul is doing here, is that we bring the authority of God because he has examined our hearts. We stay in that pure place so that when we present the gospel to someone, we will not be disqualified because we want to be authentic in Jesus' name. So perhaps as you go into this week or go into this week and you're feeling a little bit disconnected because something in the church has let you down, welcome to any type of religion on the face of the world. You're going to be let down. Stop looking at men and women and start looking at God through His Son, Jesus Christ. And then your eyes will get taken off of people and they'll put on Jesus, the author and protector of your faith. Because it's only Jesus that can maintain and bring the type of perfection that we crave and we desire and the relational intimacy that we want with God. And we have a right to assume that his followers are supposed to walk according to him because First John tells us as he is in the world, so should his followers be. But at the same time, if we focus on people too much, and this is really one of the things that Paul is saying, we're gonna miss out because there are too few genuine apostles walking on the face of the earth today, which is why unfortunately over the last year, the church had little to say about the COVID situation. So. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, Paul reacquainting himself with the Thessalonian church, saying that those who have authority are people who have proved gentle, have an authentic message, and there is not an incorrect or unsincere alignment behind it. I bless you this week as you go on. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you. J.P. Greer with the 7-Minute Share, Settles for Christ out.